This is going to be a slightly abbreviated show because uh, I'm expecting a phone call from my my son at 10 p.m. So I want to finish a few minutes before that because he, with uh, a lot of your help, because we did a fundraiser for him like a month ago and we were raising money so he could go to the Citadel Success Camp. He went to the Citadel Success Camp and he's been there for about, so he got there on Monday. So this is day three. It was quite the adjustment for the young lad who's never been away from home by himself very long. He's always been with friends and people he knows. But being away with a bunch of people, he has no idea, no idea who they are was quite an adjustment for him. And he was losing his mind for a little while, missing everybody. And he just, uh, he's like, oh man, this is tough. This is so tough. This is so tough. But, um, you know, I said to him, I said, at first I was like, hey, I feel for you. And after he kept complaining, I was like, all right, let me tell you, being a man is going through these situations like this. Whenever you see people reflecting back and, you know, before I get into that, let me just preface the story by saying my son has dedicated himself to pursuing a career in the military. He is, he, or was, I guess he's not anymore. He was in high school. He graduated recently. He was the battalion commander for the JROTC and he's looking to go through the ROTC program at the Citadel and graduate as a second lieutenant in the United States Army, which I think is fantastic. I think it's a great plan, and I think he'll go far in life, and he'll be well taken care of his whole life. But he's never been exposed to anything, no real adversity, that a lot of us, you know, you go through a certain amount of years, you reach some sort of adversity, whether it be, hey, like somebody, and you lose like a close family member. A lot of us have gone through that. It's an adversity, like I lost my sister last year. A lot of you guys have gone through stuff. Will lost his wife recently. It's a hard, it's unimaginable until you have to go through it and realize you can make it through it and keep on going. It is doable. But for my son, he's never faced a substantial challenge. And now that he's facing a substantial challenge, because the school is rigorous, it's not like a college where you go and you have leisure time and you're hanging upside down with a beer bong. Everything is regimented all day long, and it's basically boot camp infused with college, and it was culture shock, even for the camp before the college, and he is taking classes at this camp, too. He's trying to get ahead, but it's it's culture shock, and it's just a reality check, and I had to talk to him. I said, hey, Andrew, this is what life is, a series of challenges where you either don't go through the challenge, and you stay exactly where you are, and you never go anywhere, or you face a challenge, and you go past it. And you learn that you can do it and you grow as a human man. I used to call him man boy because he was, he's six foot tall. He, he weighed, no, he's not 200 pounds. He's like 180 pounds. So he's like a man sized person, but he's still a boy at heart. And he's learning that he's learning stuff. Uh, Garrett says a lot of his friends, uh, went to the Citadel. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's see, he also said, I live 20 minutes from the Citadel. I can check it. You know what? It's funny because Garrett, that's that's awesome, by the way. So I'll keep that in mind if we ever have a situation where he's, uh, he he just needs something. I'll reach out. But we have a couple of uh, folks that are down there. In fact, uh, for those of you who might have watched Skilled Trade Up before on this show, there was a guy named Chris Forsyth who always dressed like Santa Claus. It's, It's legit. Watch the older shows. He's a trip. And I think he's fantastic. He lives in the area as well. There are several people in that area, which we're lucky to have. We're lucky to have. But really, this is on the boy. And so many of us can identify with this. And I'll tie this back into HVAC. Whenever you graduate trade school, if you go to trade school, I never did. I just, I I had a family business here. So I knew where I was heading if I so chose. And I made a decision after going to college for a year that I was going to go into the trade. So I spent a year in the college heading for nowhere because I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I made good grades in college. I just didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. So I went into the trades. And a lot of us, when you go into the trades for the first time, you are the low man on the totem pole, especially outside of a family business where no one knows who you are or cares who you are. You go into the trade and you're getting everybody's wrenches and handing it to them. And they're, you're going to fetch tools that don't exist. Sometimes you're getting roped and pulled into the porta potty and tied up and not tied up in the porta potty. That sounded really weird, but tied up as far as the porta potty was tied up. It got really weird. It got like a Fifty Shades of Grey tone to it right there, and I had to had to back off of it before anyone made any accusations. Uh, oh look, let's see. I, I see my orange down there. Thank you, by the way, for highlighting my name so I could see it because 
I don't see well. So you're going to have to highlight my name by writing HVAC Shop Talk in the chat. It'll highlight it for me. Blue Air says, HVAC Shop Talk, I'm a retired 82nd Airborne Paratrooper wishing your son a great military career. That's awesome because those guys are pretty cool. 82nd Airborne is a renowned group there. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. But I just, I think that a lot of us can sympathize with his situation, although it's not exactly the same. In life, you'll go through a series of situations where you enter a place where you have no idea who anybody is. They don't care who you are. You're the low man on the totem pole, and you have to work your way up. But as all of us know, for the most part, except for the youngest of us, you do get through that, and you move to the other side, and you can accomplish things, and eventually grow in stature. Then all of a sudden, you're not fetching tools. You're getting your tools fetched. And it's not the point of it to have your tools fetched, but I'm just saying that you reach a point where the roles are reversed. You have a camaraderie that's been built over time, and it can't be replaced by anything else. And hopefully that's what your companies are like. I know all companies aren't like that. And I know it's not like that all the time either. But at least you know once you're in it for a certain period of time, you have the knowledge you need, the experience you need, that you can stand confidently with any other person in the trade. Even when they may excel in an area you don't excel in, at least you can be confident in the abilities that you've built. And you won't have to be low man on the totem pole, nervous and uh, unsure of yourself, which is a hard place to be in, especially once you've exited a place where you were the highest rank in the whole thing. So you might have been valedictorian in a trade school. I don't even know if that's a thing. But you guys know what I'm saying. If you spend a certain amount of time somewhere, you oftentimes have the opportunity to build up some repertoire with people, and all of a sudden it's all taken away from you and you have to start over again. It's very, very tough. Very, very tough. Uh, Garrett Rush's bucket of air. What's up, Raw? How's it going? Getting air samples with a trash bag. I like that. That's how they used to recover refrigerant. The recovery bag. Did you look it up? It's a real thing. The recovery bag. <laughs> a bucket of steam. Uh, my father, he grew up working on a crew for a bridge builder because his family was in the bridge building business. He lived in Hickory, North Carolina at the time, and they built many of the bridges for, I don't know, maybe Highway 64. Those of you who are familiar with Highway 64, which crosses the state from... Geez, from Greenville, where ECU's at, all the way across the state to Salisbury and Hickory and on farther. I think it's US 64. And they would build these bridges. And when he was the new guy, they would have him fetch tools that didn't exist. And I, he told the story of the cat's, I think the cat claw or something like that, the cat's head or something like that. They said to go get the cat's head or the cat's claw. I, f I forget what it was. It was a funny story, though. And he would run off and, you know, go searching in the van, not even know what he's looking for. Figure, you know, a cat's claw, it's got to be some kind of hook or something, right? There probably is a tool out there called the cat's claw. It's a bad example, probably. And then after a while, he got wise to it. And they're like, why don't you go get the cat's claw? And we go like, what size? And then you know he knows. And then it's over for that for that day. But you're still getting stuffed in the porta potty and getting thermostat wire tied around it. That happened to me. But that was my brother. That's different. You never grow out of that. That never goes away. Like the, the brothers always park the car in front of the porta potty door. That's never going away. That seniority sticks for life. For the most part. You know, you can ask Jacob and Esau, I guess, but that seniority sticks for life. <laughs> uh, the cat claw is the baby crowbar. It might be. That would make perfect sense, really. That would make perfect sense. <laughs> the closet stretcher. Yeah, but they have the duck stretcher, which is funny because when I first heard the word duck stretcher years ago, I was like, that's not a real thing, but it is. It is a real thing. Although I do not remember ever using it, but it would have come in handy to be able to put those S-locks together. It would have come in real handy because I didn't believe it existed. And whenever I saw the tool hanging up that was finally declared to me as a duck stretcher, I was like, hmm, I could have used that many, many times, many times. Uh, Steve says, I sent a new guy to get... An 8-inch flex duck stretcher from another senior tech. <laughs> See, that's funny. It is funny. You know what? you got to have a little bit of fun with people. And seriously, people had to be able to take a certain amount of this stuff. It's not like we have a society now, and I don't want to get off on like a different angle, but I feel like guys are all sensitive all the time. And if you sit back and just have a little fun and allow yourself to you know, go through this stuff, and don't take it too seriously, then you can make it out and you'll be friends with these people eventually because they're not bad people because they made you go get a fake tool. It's just a joke, and people need to take a joke. People need to take a joke and shut up about it. That's what I'm saying. 
<laughs> Garrett Russ says, yeah, I thought my professor was messing with me uh, with the duck stretcher. I should have got a picture of the duck stretcher if I would have been uh, clairvoyant, I guess. If I was Madam Cleo, I could have had a picture of the duck stretcher. We would have been good to go. But I'm not Madam Cleo. 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 Not even Jamaican. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.